All right, everyone. This is Austin with Sun Fun Kids. So this video is just basically going to be our concluding final video of our motorsport trailer build. Um, this is a 36-foot gooseneck trailer, and it's made by Intec from Indiana. They do have fairly good job building it. It's uh, structurally aluminum, including aluminum floors, aluminum frame, aluminum roof. Uh, it is insulated, but being aluminum, it is not going to be as insulated as a wood frame built uh, trailer. So we're just going to go over the major portions that we have done in order to sort of electrify and get this ready for use for lithium batteries. One thing I do want to state is that this trailer has no propane at all. It is entirely electric, including the water heating elements. Many trailers and RVs and motorhomes usually come with an accessible generator cabinet. This is usually has some rails as well as a feed to allow you to connect the generator to the main unit. So for our electrification, we chose to use the same process. The only difference is that we have a wire feed going into the trailer. This wire is six gauge wire and it is considered electrical conduit cable. So it is able to handle the amperage needed. Another thing we also did was add a supplementary axis, which is a 30 amp circuit. This is what feeds our inverter directly. So the trailer has two ways of receiving power, 30 amp circuit or its native 50 amp. We'll show that in a second. Normally, this is the 50 amp circuit that comes with most trailers and this remains intact it functions correctly the way it works is that if you are connected directly to the 50 amp you bypass the inverter setup completely but if you're not if you don't have 50 amp service available then you can connect to the 30 amp and that will provide AC input and go through the inverter so this is sort of the inside of our motorsport trailer and beneath it is where our generator cabinet is. It's actually situated here. To the right is where we have the batteries. They are currently in sort of a test configuration but they're four SFK 260 HP batteries and the way the wiring works is it comes through that conduit into the inverter. There are two solar panel ar arrays going into the unit and there's also an AC input which is that black 30 amp receptacle we showed you outside. Um, in our testing we've pretty much left this setup not plugged in for about 40 days now and on average our batteries, even with the air, air conditioning cycling for about six hours a day, is producing, uh, keeping the batteries about 60 to 70 percent. And this setup runs 24 seven, which means the inverter never shuts off. It uh, is, uh, even though the inverter itself has about a 70 watt draw, it's enough it generates enough solar power to keep the batteries charged up and provide power during the day. This is the roof of our trailer and it is pretty much decked out with solar panels. As you can see, every available spot that we could put a panel, we did. Some of the wiring still needs to be covered with a plastic corrugated tube covering which we'll finish up later but the available power is with 12 panels the large black panels are LG mono X panels 
which produce about 280 watts. These smaller panels are panels we're currently testing. It's going to be our own house brand and they are each rated for about 200 watts. And the smaller panel that you see besides the front air conditioning unit is about 100 watts each. So all combined, we're looking at right under 3,000 watts of available power. Alright guys, so I guess we're going to give you the final overview of the top. Uh, we added a little more, and it actually pretty much took over every nook and cranny that we could find and put solar on here. So there's 12 total panels, um, eight LG panels that are about 280 watts. Um, you have two 200 watt panels. Um, these are panels that we will eventually sell. We're just testing them right now. Um, and you have two 100 watt panels up in front. So all to combine, we're about 2,850 watts and they're a little dirty as you can see we've got some pollen action going on which is not very good for me because i have really bad allergies um however um if i have to say probably about eight to ten kilowatts a day can be produced uh, right now it's marsh so the sun isn't exactly 100 percent above all right guys let's see what's going on we're uh in the middle of the day and let's see what we have generating one of the panels is generating about 697 watts or one of the arrays so array one is gen uh, array two is generating 691 watts and array one is generating about 650 watts. Um, so, well, about 1300 watts. And we'll just see one of our batteries. So we have four in total. They're averaging about 76% SO state of charge. So if we go to details, each one is producing about 51 watts so it's not much each battery is drawing about three points so for sure the solar is is picking up majority of the uh, majority of the load and oops, let's try it so majority of the load is being picked up by solar but all the batteries on average are going to be around 70 70 through it. It's been running. It's about 1 p.m. and it was a bit of it was a bit of cloudy today, and the battery started off at around 80 percent charge because it ran all night. And at night, we have an electric water heater that runs. So I will currently show you the AC set to about 73 degrees, and it runs for about eight hours. It's uh, six hours about six hours a day just to kind of keep the interior sort of cool um, our mic the microwave is uh, all it's, it's it's basically powered up and and a little uh, Dometic AC DC fridge is also sort of being run moving over to the bathroom there's an electric water here that's powered 24 7 which basically keeps the water uh, warm so do not, we don't need a uh, propane heater. So there's no propane on this trailer, which is very nice. Um, it's a small, I'm guessing about maybe 10 gallon, uh, a small 10, uh, 10 gallon water heater. And um, it, it will use about 1.8 kilowatts when running, but it basically cycles on and off. It just keeps the temperature relatively, uh, you know, it's a pretty, it's, it's pretty warm, but it's all, it's powered. 24 7 and then of course we have the ceiling lights which are basically you know on right now but they're normally not guys now let's see how much uh, power we generated for the day and it's uh, about mid-march so we're in the south 
and uh, daylight cha savings had just started. So let's look at our day's total. And that is 9.69 kilowatts. So with approximately 2800 watt solar panel array, which is not actually optimized because it's flat on a trailer, which means it's really only producing full power when the sun is overhead. And it's, since it's not quite summer, it's not exactly fully overhead. Um, we produce about 10 kilowatts. Probably predicting closer to June, it's probably going to shoot up closer to about 11 kilowatts, maybe even 12. That's pretty impressive. That's almost 80, would be almost 80% of our battery bank, which is just four of the SFK 260 batteries. So this is more than enough for us to run the AC for about six hours every day, just to keep the trailer cold. And that uses about four and a half kilowatts, anywhere from four to four and a half kilowatts running about six hours during the day. And the rest just goes to keeping the battery charged. So we're putting a nice little cycle every day. And with this usage, I can predict probably get about eight, eight to ten years of this just constantly, you know, putting a small draw and charging it. So it's a very efficient setup. All right, so we're going to wrap up this trailer build video with just giving some screenshots of how it is on the inside. You basically have a ramp door, a movable shelf, um, aluminum ramp. And that's just basically used for storage and when we use it for trade shows. The front looks very similar to what we have in our initial video. It's basically a tapered V-nose with some storage cabinets in the front. We keep one SFK260 as the main 12 volt battery to power the trailer. The back includes a ramp which comes in handy when we're loading up batteries um, that we have to go to the port uh, to load up. It's very heavy duty and works really well. And the side is what we had shown in the beginning. That's normally where the generator is kept. It allows us to uh, use it for auxiliary storage and provides us an access to the main uh, uh, terminal panel should we need to do any maintenance or repairs or check the wiring. Finally, the other side includes a automatic awning that comes in handy. So if we're out in a trade show or something and we need to uh, provide some shade, it works really well. Overall, that should wrap it up. Thank you very much. And be sure to check us out if you need any of our batteries.